I am from a country that is coping with the bloodshed, trauma, violence, and economic setback that only a 30-year-long civil war can cause. I am from a country whose existence and name is either unknown because it is so small, or known simply because of the war and violence that raged within it. I am Sinhalese, part of the ethnic group that is universally thought to be the cause of all the violence and destruction that led up to this war. My name is Hyanti, and I'm from Sri Lanka, and I call this land my home. Sri Lanka. It sometimes amazes me that a large percentage of the global population don't even know of this island that holds such an important place in the hearts of many of its citizens. Truly speaking, the word citizens feels ill-suited to describe the relationship that most Sri Lankans have with this beautiful country. Because the way most Sri Lankans see it, they are actually children of Sri Lanka and not citizens of Sri Lanka. I myself was born in Sri Lanka in late 1992 to family and parents that are Sri Lankan and was raised in Colombo. So I was born about midway during the Civil War. So, like most Sri Lankans would say, we were affected by the war, firsthand. And, but like most Sri Lankans would say, the war is far from the first thing that comes to our mind when we think of Sri Lanka and when we think of home. And that's not to say that we were not affected by the war at all. Even though I personally lived in Colombo, which is not in the north or east of Sri Lanka, and therefore not a part of Sri Lanka that was as affected by the war, I too was somewhat affected by it. My first recollection of how I was affected by the war was my fifth birthday. My parents and I had planned a birthday party that was perhaps every little girl's dream. And I woke up on the morning of my fifth birthday to the news that the building in which my birthday party was supposed to be held had been bombed the night before. So my birthday party was canceled, but it was my first experience and first lesson in life that plans and life itself are not to be planned. They're unexpected. Another experience that perhaps portrays how I was affected by the war personally was when I was in ninth grade, and I remember it being close to the end of school, end of the school year. So my friends and I were in the middle of an intense basketball game. And in the middle of it, there was a series of loud gunshots that we heard. And chaos ensued. People were running out of classrooms and offices. No one knew what was happening. And suddenly, there was the deafening, final, loud sound of a bomb explosion. And later on, we found out that it was because a suicide bomber had attempted to attack the Secretary of Defense, who was passing by our school at that time. The war was in many ways responsible for making a nation of notoriously unpunctual and late people more punctual. And for those of you who know me, I'm not the most punctual person on earth either. But, and how did it do this? It was because we had to plan ahead of time to make sure that we could get to where we wanted to get on time and leave room for checkups that were being performed by the armed forces and the police forces. It also, however, made us associate every loud sound we heard with a bomb explosion. And to this day, every time I hear a loud sound, I, my first instinct is to think that it was probably a bomb explosion. So yes, we all were affected by the war in our own individual way. But despite being from all this negativity and loss of lives and bloodshed and trauma that only a 30-year-long civil war can cause, Sri Lanka means so much more to me personally and to most people of Sri Lanka than just the war. It's our home, and it's not just about the war. So however, the media portrayed Sri Lanka in a completely different light. It portrayed Sri Lanka as being nothing more than a war-torn nation 
with an oppressive majority, an oppressive government, and an extremist majority population that was bloodthirsty and violent. Perform a Google News search on Sri Lanka, even today, four years, more than four years after the war ended. Amongst the first few search results that you're likely to get is probably going to be something about war or war-related crime. And one of the first search results that will, that will be turned up would actually be the Channel 4 news video that was titled Sri Lanka's Killing Fields, that was highly opinionated and highly biased and provided an opinion that portrayed the Sri Lankan government in a highly negative light and refused to portray the extremist militant rebel group um, and the war crimes that they themselves committed, such as child conscription, using innocent civilians as human shields in the war. If you look at the Guardian news website about Sri Lanka, even now, the first editor's pick is about, is about the Sri Lankan war and a timeline of the ethnic conflict. So yes, the media did portray Sri Lanka in an extremely negative light, and it did cause a lot of problems for many Sri Lankans. Which is why I wanted to relate my experience of living in this war-torn nation, and I wanted to relate the importance of looking beyond what the media says, and looking beyond the stereotypes propagated by the media. Speaking of stereotypes, the one of the first things that comes to my mind has to do with my younger sister, who visited the US when she was perhaps 14 years old. Um, she was in Boston, and she was randomly stopped on the street by a stranger who asked her, by noticing her name tag, um, are you Sri Lankan? And when she said yes, he proceeded to ask her what ethnic group she belonged to, and when she said that she was Sinhalese, he proceeded to tell her why he thought that the Sinhalese population in Sri Lanka was nothing but an extremist, bloodthirsty group of oppressive people, and a 14-year-old girl had to listen to all of this. And this made me realize how much the media underrepresented the beauty and the positive aspects of my home and overrepresented war and war-related violence and all these negative stories about Sri Lanka. And this is just one of many similar incidents that you will hear any Sri Lankan say about experiences that they have lived through because of what the media propagated Sri Lanka to be. So today, I'm going to present a different view of Sri Lanka and what it means to me to be Sri Lankan. First, let me say that I do not at all condone the violence or the bloodshed or the loss of lives that was caused, that happened in the war. And I have always been guided by the Buddhist philosophy of nonviolence. And I always wish for a solution other than the war to this problem. And this is the opinion of most Sri Lankans. So what did actually happen? Yes, there was a war. And it was waged by the Sri Lankan government on an extremist military separatist group calling themselves the LTTE that caused a lot of violence and crime and war-related um, crimes against humanity, against not just one group of people, but against the whole of Sri Lanka, without discriminating between race and religion. And that's not to say that there weren't any extremist Sinhalese groups that did the same thing. There were many Sinhalese groups that also were extremist and made it their mission to propagate violence and stereotypes against minority groups living in Sri Lanka. However, that's not the case with the majority of the Sinhalese population. And my family, like many other Sinhalese families, provided protection to such minority groups at risk to their own lives when they were being atta attacked by such extremist Sinhalese groups. Personally speaking, my oldest friend back home is Tamil, and my best friend from home is Muslim. Race and religion really had little to nothing to do with the relationships and friendships we formed at home. We celebrate every religious festival of every religious group living in Sri Lanka. So this, by the way, makes us the nation with the highest public holidays in the world. <laughs> so we learn to respect and appreciate different races and cultures from a very young age. 
And this message is ingrained in our heads at very, from a very young age. So the next time you meet a Sri Lankan, ask them about something other than the war. And remember to do this for any country that is propagated, in the, that is talked about in the media just because of conflict and violence and war. Because every country is something more than what the media portrays it to be. And it is our responsibility to remember that, that every country has both negative and positive aspects to it. So here is my attempt to tell you a little bit about what Sri Lanka means to me. I am from a land of long names, sunny weather, spicy food, the sound of ocean waves crashing against sandy shores, cooling forests and tea plantations that blanket beautiful mountains, street vendors who will happily cheat you for a few extra rupees, but equally happily help you without expecting anything in return if your car breaks down in the middle of the street. I am from a land where the majority struggles to make a day's living, but will smile so brightly that my country is known as the land of smiles. I'm from a country where even the bitterest of enemies will unite and cry or cheer over the outcome of a cricket game. <laughs> I am from a country that has a proud history of 2,500 years. And in this history, there are stories of technological progress and technological development that amazes mankind to this day. But most importantly, I am from a land of diverse ethnic groups and diverse religions different castes and different cultures. And I'm from a land that I call home. And like all homes, not every day is a day that I'm proud to call myself a Sri Lankan. But for the most part, I am proud to call myself Sri Lankan. And I hope that one day all of you will take some time off to visit this beautiful country that I call home. And for people who are wondering, these pictures are actually, um, most of them were taken by me, and I'm not a good photographer, but it's really not that difficult to take good pictures in Sri Lanka. So, more incentive for you guys to come to Sri Lanka. Thank you.